Thank you, Donald. You always do a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. So almost happy Thanksgiving. Um, you know, it's, I, I remember um, my first Thanksgiving in America. Uh, do you know there were actually how to calculate Thanksgiving, right? And some people still don't know how do you think what how you know when is the Thanksgiving? It's the fourth Thursday in November. Did you guys know that? Okay, good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you didn't know that. <laughs> you just found out today. <laughs> no, no. It's the fourth Thursday of uh, in November. You know. Yeah. And so, praise the Lord um, that Thanksgiving is coming. And and as we start the month of November, um, I kind of said it was a thanks living. Where the two weeks ago, two Sundays ago, I said, okay, let's continue to live the whole month in, in gratitude of what God has done for us and looking at Hebrews chapter 11, how God has given us this assurance and conviction of our being one with Christ that we were far away from God, right, in our sin and how God has provided the way for us to be with God and giving us the assurance and conviction like through the blood of Jesus Christ. When we are not sure, like, hey, how can we be with God? But God has given us a way, given us a conviction, and given us the assurance through His Son's death, right? Through His Son coming to this world, dying on the cross, that God is giving us a sure sign of this much that He has paid our debt Though, so that we can be with God. That is the faith, the ultimate faith that God gives us in His conviction, in His assurance through the blood of Jesus Christ. And last week, I talked about how we can be thankful in the ways that God has made us His sons, His daughters, right? We are His children. And in the ways that God um, makes Himself available to us in hearing our prayer, that how much that we are in need of Him, right? How much we are in need of Him. So um, when we think about that, how we need to be like Christ, well, what do you guys think about? Let's say you can be like Christ in, in different aspects, right? I think most of us think about like, wow, if I can turn water into wine, man, you know, that'd be a pretty good business idea, you know, you know or I can be, pretty, or even like all kinds of power that you may have. Oh, I can walk on water. If somebody is sick, lay my hands and bam, that person will be healed, right? That kind of power, that kind of, you know, money-making things or, or, or self-sufficiency, but, but I think in more ways that how God's teaches us, how Jesus teaches us anyway, is that being more like Christ is being in more independent of His Father. Right? Not in self-sufficiency, but not in just all in power, or maybe in secret some ways like, oh, I can be, like, oh, oh I can be, like being an army. But I think in the ways that Jesus continued to teach us is that to be like Christ is to be dependent on the Father like Christ. Think about that for a minute. Right? Yeah, you know, and, and there's so many verses about the Bible, how Jesus says it, right? He said, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Right? The will of Him who sent me, right? And Jesus is saying, I don't do the things or whatever I want to do, but I only do the things though, for the will of God who has sent me. I do exactly as the Father commands me to do. Right? And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to the Father. I think, I think is that not being self-sufficient, right, but being dependent on the Father, right? to please the Father, to get His marching orders, to understand what He wants Him to do, right? Not whatever right? I can do without the Father. Isn't that our dream in some sense? 
You know, when you grow up as a teenager, like, oh man, my parents are so mean, you know? Doesn't matter how nice they are, that's how you think, right? Parents are so mean, they're always restrictive, you know? I have to be home by, you know, 9 o'clock and go to bed by 10 o'clock and wake up by 8 o'clock and go to school by 9 o'clock or whatever the regimen that you lived in, right? And like, man, I cannot wait until I'm 18 years old and get out of this house and be all I can be, right? Live in freedom and, right? Without any restriction. Then when you live by yourself, like, oh man, I gotta do my own laundry. I gotta pay rent and we gotta do all these different kind of things. Like, oh, surely I miss home, you know, right? And that kind of things, right? But I think God teaches us again, again, to be dependent on the Father, to know, man, my Father in heaven has best interest of me. He loves me. He cares for me. Even all the things that He tells me not to do in the Bible is because it's good for me. He wants me to be delivered from evil and live this abundant life. That's why he's telling me not to do these kind of things and to do these good things so that in order for me to grow and to be more like him each moment of our lives. I think it's so important. Let me translate it in a little bit in Korean in two sentences. Yeah. <laughs> 예수님께서도 이 땅에 오신 목적을 하나님의 뜻을 이루시고 하나님을 기쁘게 해드리는 그 마음으로 오신 것처럼 하나님을 더욱더 의지하는 네, 그런 모습인 것 같습니다. 어, 우리가 성장해서 우리 마음대로 삶을 사는 것이 아니라 예수님께서 보여주신 것처럼 아버지를 의지하고 아버지의 뜻대로 하고 아버지가 시키는 대로 하는 것이 예수님을 닮는 것이 아닌가 더욱더 생각하는 마음에서 제가 우리가 11월 달을 정말 감사절, 감사절을 월을 만드는 것은 우리가 그 11월 달을 감사하는 마음. 하나님께서 우리 보고 기도하라는 것도 얼마나 감사합니까? 우리가 도움이 많이 필요하기 때문에. Right? You know, we all need a lot of help. Even in the ways that God receives our prayer is that we do need help. And especially guys, right? We need lots of help. Right? That's why the Bible says that when God saw Adam, I said, it's not good to be alone, alone. <laughs> because he needs lots of help. And I will surely make him a suitable helper. Right? And brought Eve along to Adam. And Adam said, whoa, man. Right, right, right. You know, bone on my bone and flesh on my flesh. Right? And that kind of thing. And we do need lots of help in living in this world, right? And, and last week we talked about growing in love with knowledge and all discernment, right? We, we need to grow in love. 저번 주에는 우리가 지식과 청면으로 점점 더 사랑으로 풍성하는 것을 얘기했는데 이번 주는 우리가 진실하여 허물 없이 그리스도의 날까지 이루는 네, 그거는 개혁 한글이지만 좀 쉬운 말로 한, 그, 어, 성경은 그리스도의 나를 막지하기에 순결하여 흠이 없이 되는 그렇게 나옵니다. Yeah. So this week we're going to talk about two purposes and the two purposes are the to be pure and blameless to be pure and blameless for the days of Christ and be filled with the fruit of non, uh, righteousness. And those are two things. One of them is solid line, and the second thing is a kind of the dotted line, you know? Yeah, and so kind of distinguishes. It's not one thing, but it's two different things, right? And that's what it says. Uh, let's read it together in English, and you can read it along in Korean too if you guys want to read it. Uh, so um, let's read the whole three verses. Uh, ready? Go. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. Yeah, that's why it says to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ and filled with the fruit of righteousness. Right? And remember last, said, last week I said, I was going to preach this whole sermon last week, but it will probably take me two, two hours to do that. So I decided to break into three different parts. And yes, last time I talked about love, but today I'm going to talk about those two purposes, to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness. So this is in view of the day of Christ. 
day of Christ, right? And, and depending on how you view the day of Christ, you could see this as somewhat negative or somewhat positive, right? Or, or you could this, see this as an encouragement, right? Or, 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 or you could see this as a pressure or like negative, you know? Your dad's coming, you better do whatever your mom told you to do as a very negative, right? Right? Or, oh, your, your dad's coming, right? Don't you want to show up to your dad about what you have done? Like, one's pa- same event, but one is positive and one is negative. One is encouragement and one is very negative. Just imagine there was a bully picking up on you, right? Picking on you and he wants to fight with you and says, after school, you and me in the football field, right? right? Then like, it's 12 o'clock and you eat lunch and he's in indigestion, right? Oh my goodness, today I'm going to die, you know? Right? And, uh, 12.30, right? Just imagine that, that 3 o'clock is coming. Right? right? And that's not a good thing. But imagine a wedding day. Right? Those of you who are married, right? Like, man, imagine like six months later, three months later, oh, how come time is not going? Hurry up, you know? Right? right? Two months later, one month later, 15 days, 10, you know, like T minus nine, like, oh my goodness, hurry up, you know? So if I sleep more, then maybe time will go faster, you know? Right? I don't know, whatever you get. But just the encouragement, the day of Christ. Right? And so understanding this is in view of the day of Christ. Depending on what your views are, your perspectives are, it could be positive or it could be negative. Right? And that's why Francis Chan says, like, I never uh, go to a movie theater. And the reason is that he doesn't want to go to the movie theater. And when, let's say, that happened to be the time when Jesus comes back, he says, I don't want Jesus to find me at the movie theater when he comes back. You know, I guess when you watch a good movie, it's okay. But when you're not watching a good movie, then it's not, it's not good. And this is a Francis Chan's conviction, right? And But there's a verses after verses the Bible talks about how the day will come for sure, right? The second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, will come like a thief. And then the heaven will pass away with the roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Right? Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of things Uh, What sort of people ought you to be living in holiness and godliness? Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord because of which the heaven will be set on fire and be dissolved. So knowing that Christ will come, knowing the day will end one of the days, how would you be prepared for the day of the Lord is coming? Right? And so it's not something to be scared of, but it's something to be encouraged of. Right? The, all your suffering, all your tears will be wiped away when Jesus has come back. And in that encouragement, how would we set our lives to live in these last days? Right? Living as an encouragement as Jesus will come. Same event, right? One is positive, one is negative. It can be negative. <coughs> Just imagine you're getting robbed by a, a robber. Right? Then you hear a, a siren coming, policeman coming, hey, 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 right? And uh, if you are the who's robbing, what would you think? Oh my goodness, I'm in trouble. Right? But you're the one who's getting robbed. You're like, oh my goodness, I, yes, hurry up, come, right? That's the thing. And when you have a good relationship with Jesus, you want Jesus to come back because you want to see him to face to face. You want to hear those words good and faithful servant. You want to understand how much he really, really loves us, how much he's for us, and all the questions you have about the Bible, you can ask him that day. Right? Wouldn't that be a glorious day? Right? That we get to live with him in heaven and again and again, forever and ever? Right? In his glory, where we don't need a light, we don't need sun, we don't need a moon, because for himself is the light. Amen. Yeah, wouldn't that be glorious? Yeah, because we have that relationship with God, it is an encouragement for us. 
Yeah. And how much more we need His grace to renew us again and again, to give us, enforce us, reinforce us in this positive aspects so that we can live these last days in view of the day of Christ, waiting for Christ to come back. And when you read Matthew 25, right, surely God will return, Jesus will come, and He will separate the sheep and the goat. Right? And we want to be those five virgins that who were prepared well for the, our groom to come back. Right? Our groom to come. Just imagine if you were the groom. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times we may think we're the bride. Like, oh, you know, like, how come my groom, groom's not coming? But yes, imagine you are the groom. Then you have, right, that bride somewhere out there. What would you want your bride to do right now? Right? Hopefully be at church, right? And praying, you know. <laughs> right? Isn't that what you want your bride to be at? Or your bride to be, you know, somewhere else and, you know, partying all night long and maybe hungover? I mean, what would you be? Like, uh, honey, come on. You know, if you can't talk to her right now, what would you say to her? You know, Repent, honey. I love you. Whoever you are, you know. One time I asked uh, one of our leaders, uh, some of our leaders to come to my house and for, for some meeting, I think, you know. And I said, oh, hey, you can bring your significant other, right? And uh, Robert said, like, oh, uh, wh whoever she is, I'd like to meet her someday, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know. Like, you know what would you want to be right now, right? Hopefully somewhere, right, praying and thinking and reading her Bible, doing quiet time, doing the will of the Father, right? And I think that's the way, that that's the you know, the groom's perspective. And knowing the groom's perspective, how should we live in this view of the last days? 그리스도 날은 그 마지막 날을 얘기하는 겁니다. 마지막 날이 확실하게 오기 때문에 그 마지막 날을 기대하는 마음으로 매일매일을 살라는 것입니다. 우리가 그냥 막 사는 게 아니라 마지막 날이 없는 처럼 막 사는 게 아니라 그 날이 확실하게 오기 때문에 그날을 기대하는 마음으로 정말 우리가 신랑이면 어떤 부인을 정말 그죠? 그 부인을 맞이하는 날을 어떻게 기다리고 있겠습니까? 어? 결혼을 막 만약에 6개월 후에 한다면 어, 6개월 남았네. 3개월 후에 어, 3개월 남았네. 한달 남았네. 열흘 남았네. 그 날을 기다리면서 그러면 그, 그런 흥분한 마음으로 기쁜 마음으로 살지 않겠습니까? 어? 그 남편을 만날 때까지 부인을 만나는 그날 결혼을 하는 그날 얼마나 우리가 기쁜 마음으로 즐거운 마음으로 그 동기부여하며 희망 있는 날처럼 우리가 살게 없겠습니까? 야, 그러니까 이이 이 말도 이 말씀도 우리가 그 진실하여 허물 없이 그리스도 날까지 그 마지막 날까지 우리가 기대하면서 살라는 격려의 말입니다. 혼나는 말이 아닙니다. 우리가 하나님과의 올바른 관계에 있으면 이게 혼나는 틀린 그 나쁜 말이 아니라 좋은 말입니다. 격려의 말이에요. 그 날이 분명히 올기 때문에 오늘 하나님과 그 기쁜 관계 속 안에서 그 날을 정말로 오기 때문에 기다리면서 살아라. So there are two purposes. One purpose is to be pure and blameless, and the other one is to be filled with the fruit of righteousness. And and the word pure it means sincere, without hidden motives or pretense. Right? It is derived from the similar word as like sunlight. And how 1 John talks about, you know, walking in light, right, all the time. And when you walk in the light, what happens? When you're in the light, first of all, you can see, right? And when you're not in the light, you cannot see anything, right? Because the light is the one who gives you kind of the vision that the, those photons need to hit your eyeballs, and, right? And so, you know, without light, you can't even see, you cannot be guided. And also light help us to see, right, when you look in the mirror, to see what we need to be exposed of. You know, oh, oh, you know, I look in my mirror, oh, I got a little bit, you know, like a dirt right here, or I got to wash my thing. This morning I woke up, my eyes was really, really bothering. I looked in the mirror, and there's an eyelash inside my, inside my eyeball, you know. So I had to go like this and touch my the eyeball and then stick the thing out. Right? So, so it sees me how it is. The, the you know the defects that I you know have and so I have what happened I gotta I gotta cleanse it I gotta you know be and light itself it does that for us right and those kimchi stains right whatever like stains you may have you put it in the light it cleanses it it's amazing 
the light can bring cleansing. And Bible says, uh, right, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. And what do you think about Jesus and his purity? And how pure Jesus was. Is, isn't it true that even as a Christian, we want to be pure as Jesus was pure? Isn't there, even though you didn't know the Bible verses, like in some sense, right, as you follow Christ and as who Jesus was, how pure he was, and how you want to be as pure as Jesus in some sense. And that's in the Bible, right? 1 John 3, 3 says, Everyone who has this hope, this hope means Jesus' return in him, purifies himself just as he is pure. There's some sense that in our mystical union with Christ, we want to be all Jesus is in our lives right here. And that is the desire that God gives us yeah, to be pure. You know, when I think about this, this word pure, uh, you know, I'm so convicted that how I'm not that pure. You know, when I look at the young people, right, at least the way I talk with them, and I'm so challenged in the ways that they're so pure, even in the ways that they devote themselves to the Lord, they devote themselves to the church, and even the things that God has given them to do. And so I hear them, it shocks me. Like, wow, these guys are so pure. You know, I'm, 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 I'm like shocked, you know, and so I, I go home, repent all the time, and even, even uh, preparing this message, um, I, sometimes I think about, uh, as I prepare some other messages, I'm like, oh man, you know, this part, I think so-and-so needs to listen. And I prepare that part really hard for that person, and, and I preach it, and somehow that person is not here, you know? <laughs> and that, it doesn't happen just one time, it happens again and again and again and again. Those of you who missed church recently, don't think about that as you guys, right? Like, oh, what, what, what is the message I need to you? Don't be so, so, uh, you know. Yeah. But, but then through that, God is teaching me. He said, say, don't you want to honor me when you preach? Why you always have to think about other people? You do not know the things that I have in store for you. Right? You just need to preach the word. Just say, and so... I had a lot of cleansing moment this week, you know, like a oh Lord, just cleansing me. Don't think about anybody. Just think about you. And I want to bring the word of God to, to you, represent you correctly, however who you are, in the ways that you have expressed yourself in the word. And I just want to do that. And whoever is here, whoever is not here, well, you know, in some sense, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I want to be pure in that. And I think all of us, right, we can, we can drive in ourselves, looking at how pure Jesus was, and we want to be pure like Jesus as well. We got 순결한다는 것은 진실되고 동기가 뚜렷하고 깨끗하고 다른 이익을 위해서가 아니라 그냥 하나님을 순종하는 마음에서 그 완전한 그 순결한 마음에서 햇빛과 비슷한 단어인데 우리가 햇빛 안에서 살면 어떡합니까? 햇빛이 우리를 보게 해주잖아요. 또 우리가 보는 것뿐만 아니라 뭐가 더러운 것을 알려주고 더러운 것을 깨끗하게 해줍니다. 여러분 도마에 김치 같은 거 있으면은 햇빛에 갖다 놓으면 깨끗해지잖아요, 그죠? 야 그런 것처럼 햇빛 안에서 걸을 때, 야 우리가 야 정말 예수님처럼, 그러니까 예수님을 따라간다는 면에서 예수님이 순결한 것처럼 우리가 그런 순결한 마음을 그죠? 품게 만들어주고 예수님처럼 어 그런 게 순결하는 깨끗하는 예, 그런 마음뿐만 아니라 우리가 그렇게 살수 있도록 은혜도 하나님께서 부어준다는 것입니다. You know the standard we live is against the standard of Jesus. A lot of times when we talk about being pure or blameless or any other class standard, we always talk about, oh, oh, I'm better than my neighbor. Oh, I'm better than my roommate, you know, or I, at least I do dishes, you know, my roommate never did the dishes, you know. Right? You know, how do you know? Maybe when you're not watching, that person did it. But our standard, right, in standard of purity is, is Jesus in all areas. Yeah, I think sometimes that when we grow up in certain type of you know, churches, we, we have a certain standard of maybe sexuality, right? Or, or maybe some other views of it. And if you grew up in liberal church, right, we always have a standard in greed. Oh, those Republicans are so greedy, right? right? But also when you grow up in the conservative homes, we always think about, oh, the sexuality is always bad. 
Well, did you know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, right? It lists both. It lists the greed and sexual sins. Right? They're on the same boat, and neither one will inherit the kingdom of God. Right? And so it's not pointing finger to one another, something that you're good at, right? Right? Or, or something that some other people are bad at, but our standard of perfection, our standard of purity is Jesus. Just the way 1 John 3 3 says. You compare yourself to Jesus, right? And how much that we need to grow, right? And so this first purpose, the second part is being blameless. It means that without offense or not causing offense. 1 Corinthians 10.32 says, Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greek, or the church of God. Right? It's, it's, it's a similar word that we shouldn't cause anyone to stumble, right? Not causing others to stumble in the ways that we are misrepresenting even Christianity. Right? Don't we represent some sense of, oh, you got to be somewhat perfect in order to go, to go to church. So when I share Christ with people, they always tell me, not always, a lot of times they tell me, oh, you know, pastor, I smoke, I drink. Let me, let me cut out those things in order for me to go to church. I, I hear that countless times. You know? Uh, but it is Christ who is the one who cleanses us. Amen. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of times that we want to be all clean ourselves up first in order for us to be in the presence of God. But God is saying, no, you come as you are. And I will cleanse you from inside out. I will give you a new motivation. I will give you the new desire. I will even give you the power for you to do the desire that I am giving you. Christianity is a supernatural religion. It's a supernatural religion. a supernatural relationship with God. Christ in us, it is the hope of glory. That Christ in us, it will transform us. And that's why sometimes Christianity doesn't work. Because you try, you try, you try. And you know you fail, you fail, you fail. You, you realize that in January 1st. Oh my goodness, I'm going to so exercise, you know. Uh, I'm going to do my quiet time every day. Right? Right? I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to study so hard. I'm going to read like five books a day or whatever you, you decide to do. Right? And three days go by or even three seconds goes by. Oh my goodness, I already failed. <laughs> right? right? That's why it doesn't work. And, and, and because we did that, oh, we say, oh, Christianity doesn't work. Christianity works because Christ in us, it is the hope of glory. Christ is the one who's bringing out the transformation in our lives. Yeah, and that's so important for us to understand and to live, you know? Yeah, and, and you know, is it, this, this about somebody else to causing somebody else to stumble? Didn't Jesus say something about if anyone causes this little one to stumble? It's better for you to, you know, tie something around your head and dropping off a lake or something like that. He takes that very seriously, representing Christ. And I'm not saying that we live in perfection, right? But what we live in authenticity of how we fail and how do we deal with our failing? You no, know, right? In our real relationship with God, we're not perfect. How do you deal with your sins? How do people in your household, how do your kids understand how do we confess my sins and how do I right, appropriate the gospel into my life in order for me to live in this real relationship with God? Not some fake relationship with God. Only perfect people come to church. Uh, and that's a big problem, right? There's discrepancy, discrepancy between what we say and what we do sometimes. But how we live our relationship with God, how it needs to be so real, where we repent and when we believe, repent and believe is the way that how they began their relationship with God and how we continue our relationship with God as well. We continue to repent. We continue to run towards God again and again. Run towards Jesus again and again. So we are motivated to be pure and blameless as we look forward to the day of Jesus' return as bride waits for the groom to come and take us to be with him. We're waiting for the groom. Right? And, and waiting for the groom ought to be very important for us. We want to be pure. We want to be ready 
like those five wise virgins, right? And living in this gospel-oriented lifestyle. Gospel-oriented lifestyle. Not as a perfect person, but perfect God, loving a sinner in giving us life, giving us relationship, and giving us hope. And being an example, right? As imperfect as we are to follow Christ. And so we give hope to those other people who have not known Christ, who are imperfect as well, in order for them to see how imperfect can have a relationship with the perfect God and how we show and tell, not just show, but show and tell how we can have a relationship with God. Yeah. 흠이 없다는 것은 우리가 정말 흠이 없는 게 아니라 한 면에서는 예수, 예수님을 닮기 위해서 흠이 없이 그죠? 없어야 되지만 한 면에서는 우리가 있는 그대로의 모습으로 하나님과 관계를 맺는다는 것입니다. 하나님과 관계를 맺을 때 우리의 흠이 있는 것을 어떻게 해결할 건가? 우리의 자녀들도 그죠? 흠이 있으면 걔네들이 어떻게 그걸 해결하겠어요? 그냥 어, 흠 있는 거 없는 것처럼 하고 살아. 그죠? 흠 없는 거 그냥 용서해 줘. 물론 용서를 해야 되지만 하나님과 관계성 안에서 하나님께서 우리가 얼마큼 변할 수 있는 초능력적인 하나님과 관계를 주시는 건지 그 정말 정말 기독교의 핵심은 대로 살아야 된다는 것입니다. 기독교의 핵심은 예수님께서 우리 마음에 오셔서 우리가 예수님처럼 살수 있도록 도와준다 도와주신다는 거예요. 예수님께서 우리 마음에 오셔서 우리가 예수님처럼 살게 해준다는 그런 초능력적인 삶을 얘기하는 것입니다. The next purpose is to be filled with the fruit of not righteousness through Jesus Christ. Everybody say fruit. Yeah, fruit. And 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 you know this is a time where this kind of theological term, right? It's called positional righteousness. Everybody say positional righteousness. The other side is the, not the other side, but similar is the conditional righteousness, right? Or practical righteousness, yeah. And positional righteousness is that when Jesus becomes the master of our lives, we are given this positional righteousness. We are perfect in God's eyes because we are given Jesus' status. Jesus' righteous is the imputed to us. Right? When Jesus becomes our master, Jesus imputes his righteousness upon us. Right? And Romans 3, 9 says, And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. The righteousness that comes by faith, right? By conviction and assurance that what Jesus did imputes his perfect test score. And his perfect life is imputed upon us. So positionally, we are like that. Right? right? And But conditionally, practically, we're not like that at all. Right? There's the big disconnect between positional and practical. Right? right? But righteousness is so important. Because a lot of times, and as we are growing in this relationship with God, as our conditional righteousness or practical righteousness catches up or pursue of this positional righteousness, right? We may lose hope, right? We may lose this sense of like, oh, maybe I'm not God's child. We may fear of who we are, right? But this must be very clear that are in the ways that our practical righteousness catches up, our positional righteous is never hindered by the way that we are growing. You know? but, but this is so tricky sometimes, right? Because even in my relationship with all the people relationship I have in this world, based on what I do, I evaluate myself. You know? And even in the ways that I think about my mom, you know, and in Korea, and like, you know, hey, you know, like, oh, maybe I should go visit her like 10 times a year or whatever it is, you know, right? And she's getting older in her age and, right? Or maybe I should go visit her twice or, or once a year or whatever, right? And based on 
who I am or how I do in my relationship with God, I tend to evaluate who I am. And even in the way my relationship with my son or my wife, right? But if I ask my mom, my mom says, you're always my son. What you do, it doesn't really change us. Maybe as a son, that changes, but now I'm a parent? I totally understand that. Yeah. But I don't encourage my kids to do bad things, but if they do do bad things, I'm not going to say, I disown you. Or if you do, that's pretty messed up, you know? Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? As a parent, right? my relationship with them is secure. Their relationship with me is secure. Right? That's the position of righteousness. But conditionally, I want my kids to grow. I want my kids to mature. I want my kids to, you know, be like Christ more and more. But it doesn't matter how slow or how fast or how glorious or how non-glorious, right? That doesn't change my connection with my kids. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And that's so important, right? right? So this position of righteousness and practical righteousness. I think our Korean adults understood that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Yeah, but please notice that it is a fruit. It's, it's, a, it's a fruit to grow in Christ-likeness, right? It flows out from our mystic union with Christ. When we are abiding in Christ, right? His character, His power, His nature, His characteristics will grow, grow out of our lives when we are connected with Christ because it is a fruit, right? Not that you work hard, not that you just listen to what God tells you to do and you go over there and then you work it out all by yourself in order for you to produce what God wants you to produce. But it's a fruit as based on how we are connected with the vine. Right? John 55, 15, 5 says, I am the vine. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me, I in him, he will bear much fruit. Right? It's a fruit. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's automatic producing of their connection, their abiding, their communion with Jesus. You know, no one can see how is my connection, my abiding, and my communion with Christ. But people can tell by the fruit. People can tell by the fruit. Yeah. 여기서 우리가 알아야 될 것은 열매라는 것입니다. 우리와 하나님과의 관계에서 나오는 것. 우리가 열심히 일해서 나오는 것이 아니라 하나님과 우리랑 붙어 있기 때문에 하나님과 우리랑 살아있는 관계로 열, 연, 연결이 됐기 때문에 예수님의 그죠? 그 하나님의 그 성품이 우리의 연결을 통해서 나온다는 것입니다. 얼마나 붙어 있나가 그저 볼수 없지만 우리가 열매를 볼수 있는 것처럼 우리의 열매를 보면서 내가 얼마나 붙어 있었나 도 평가가 되는 것입니다. Yeah. You know, how can you tell about yourself? Are you aware of how much we are unlike Christ? How much we are unlike Christ? 우리가 얼마나 예수님과 닮지 않았나? You know, sometimes it's a blessing to know. I remember in, in Cal Poly going to, you know, classes and making a robot and stuff like that. And sometimes robot works well, but once in a while it doesn't work. But man, you spend all night long trying to figure out, you know, what was the condition in order for the, comp uh, the, the robot not to run right? Because you want the robot to run perfectly, right? right? And so you want the imperfection to come out. So when you find that, Praise the Lord! I think oh, I can fix it, right? Right? But a lot of times that in ourselves, we even the things that we see, how much we are unlike Christ, we don't like it. Yeah. You know what? When you are like that, that means you don't like perfection. Yeah. When you like perfection, when you want your life to run like perfection, like Jesus, right? You want. To, to see how imperfect you are. So in order for us to even pray to the Lord, Lord, help me in these areas of our lives. You know, Galatians 5.22 lists out the fruit of the Spirit, right? But just think about the backwards of it, right? Love, how unloving we are. Man, how even unaware we are. 
unaware of people around us and what their needs are, right? And I know some of you guys you need a lot of help. Like, yeah, I know these people, they, they don't know my needs. You know, like, what, what about the other people the other way? Do you know other people's needs? It's not always like a me, 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 me. I need your need. I, I have a lot of needs. But a lot of other people needs too. Financially, emotionally. And yesterday I went to a funeral. You know, and my another friend who's very young, died last week too. You know, very, very young pastor. He had ALS, you know, and he, he passed away. So young. He was really good at ping pong too. He gave me one of his ping pong paddles. I still have it. What a nice guy. Nice butterfly one. If you know ping pong paddles, you know. Yeah. I mean, right? You know, like, yeah. Do you, are you aware how unloving we are? Right? Even joy. How unjoyful we are. Right? And our joy is always fickle. It always changes. Something good happens, like, yeah, you know? Something bad happens, uh, you know? The same thing at Christian concerts, like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, all these young kids in the front, they jump like crazy, like, with the beat, of course, you know, like, yeah, right? Not like me, with no beat, that no jump all over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you beat like crazy, but same person goes on the bus stop and they're like, hey, what happened? I wrote a, I, I heard a book one day. And he said he went to a concert and these young kids are jumping up and down and stuff like that. And same kid he happened to be on the bus stop. He was all like plumped down. And that guy asked him, hey, didn't I see you two hours ago in the Christian concert jumping up and down? What happened? Did God die? <laughs> Why is that? Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, our joy is so fickle. Right? It happens back and forth, back and forth. And how unpeaceful or worrying we are. Right? We worry a lot. Impatient. Right? Fruit is impatient, but opposite is very impatient. We want to happen to church right now. Even as a pastor, like, how you guys not changing? Remember I told you I was taking uh, uh, malaria pills and that was my conviction. And I thought when I had that dream, what a holy dream it is. You know, holy dream of like looking at people, God, please change them in the name of Jesus. I, I dreamt that. But like again and again later, I'm realizing like God is showing me, look, you see how impatient you are, how incorrect you are even evaluating the dreams that you had. You know, I didn't show you that dream in order for you to see how holy you are, but how unholy you are, how impatient you are, and how long it took you to bring transformation or be transformed. I'm 50 years old. And when I look at you guys, you know, many of you guys are like, wow, you're all way ahead of me. Praise the Lord. So I have hope for our church. You know, yeah. Even just practically, God will do amazing things as we remain faithful to the things that God is faithful to us and shown to us. You know, how unkind we are. Are you kind? Only kind to people that maybe you know? But how about just in any other people? Are you kind? Are you good? Or are you evil? Are you, you know, plan evil things or think about evil? Or even faithfulness, how unfaithful we are. Do you keep your promises? Do you make promises and keep them? Are you gentle or are you not gentle? Right? What's the opposite of gentleness? English majors? <laughs> Joya? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Harshness, yeah, there you go. How Jesus said, he did not broke, un, right? Or, or what is that? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. What well, say that again? One broken bruise, bruised reed. Yeah, he will not break bruised reed. You know, he was very gentle like that. Yeah. And self-control. And we don't know how to be self-control. Yeah, right? You know, like, past two weeks, I, I've been eating a lot, so I gained some weight. And like, I, I put, put my suit on. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's like, so last week, I exercised on self-control. And like, oh, it fits like, oh, perfectly. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know? Yeah, right? Yeah, self-control. Yeah, you know, all this pastor's appreciation thing you guys gave me. Oh my goodness. It was all your fault, you know? It's, yeah. <laughs> You know? Yeah, Hamilton took me all you can eat, you know, in Santa Maria. Oh my goodness, that was like, yeah. And of course, you can say like, oh, who told you to eat all those things? You know, like, yeah, you gotta eat your money's worth anyway, right? Yeah. So how unholy, un, 
or joyful, unloving, right? We are, and like I told you earlier, even building that robot is a blessing for us to know at least how we can pray to the Lord. Lord, make me loving. Maybe make me loving towards this particular person. Yeah? You know, make me patient towards church members. You know, because I think they really trying to connect with you. But help me to help them how they can connect with you better so that they can bring or, or bring experience to transformation. Don't be so need to harsh on them and you know, <laughs> you know, andale, andale, you know? Yeah, bali, bali, right, right, always like that, right? But just be patient with them, Lord. So how would you know how if God answered your prayer or not, if you're not specific? In the ways that, you know, it's jealousy, envy, or whatever it is, how we can ask God, right, to bring transformation into our lives. And how do, how do we actually treat people, right? And the Bible says how we treat the least of these, and that's how we treat Jesus. Right. And again, this is not a judgment for us to lower. You know, I don't treat people very well. I don't even know people that who are around me. I'm so indifferent. I'm so uncaring. But Lord, help me. Help me to be caring. Help me to understand how much you're caring for us and, and bring about that transformation so that I can bear the fruit of righteousness through Christ Jesus. Through our connection with Christ. Right? So all these things we talked about are something that we work on the rest of our lives. So all these pure, blameless, right? Growing in Christ, bearing the fruit of righteousness. This is a, has to do with real relationship, having growth mindset. 우리가 정말 이 성장하는 마인셋을 갖고 있고 성장 사고 방식을 갖고 있어야지 우리가 항상 우리가 성장할 수 있는 항상 하나님께 달려가는 항상 예수님처럼 닮는 그런 삶을 산다는 것입니다. So you better have fun in this process. Like robot build. You better have fun like oh what's something wrong with it? I want to figure out right? that things is broken so that you can fix it. Right? Not you can fix it, but you can ask God to fix it in your life. You better have fun in this process. If you don't, you're going to get bored. Right? You, 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 you give up, and you even end up saying maybe Christianity doesn't work. Right? You better like Jesus so much that becoming like Jesus must be challenging, exciting, and enjoyable. In this process of making my robot so work perfectly, it's so fun. Just like that. You abiding in Christ and you living out right, this life as Christ. It must be so fun and so exciting and so enjoyable. Uh, the most enjoyable thing that we do on this side of heaven. Uh, and that it must be real in our lives. That must be the growth mindset in our lives. We want to grow and to be like Jesus Christ. So when we get rebuked, right? Man, I used to hate that. When my wife asked me difficult questions. Yeah, and you know, when we mess up, when, 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 nah, we, when I mess up, right? And I, usually I'm the one that says, I'm sorry. And my wife does not let me go that easy. Yeah. And she said, what are you sorry about? <laughs> With her nonchalant Chinese, you know, that scary face. You know, I'm like, oh, no. I don't know, honey. You know. So are you just saying that because you just want to, right? You know, this tense moment just to pass away? And I'm like, inside, yes, you know, but, but outside, no, you know, like, I lied again, oh my goodness. You know, he's, I'm in big trouble. You know what I'm saying, right, guys? Right, you got it? Like, Ryan's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, we like that. Yeah, I don't like to give review. I don't like to get criticized. You know, I don't like to give emails from you guys on Monday. Pastor, when you say this, that wasn't very cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, when we understand this positional righteousness and our practical righteousness need to catch up for the glory of God. It's not how great I am, but it's how great Christ is. 
Even in the ways that I pursue Christ, and even in the ways that how Christ continued to transform us to be like Him. And that is the most glorious thing that we get to do on this side of heaven. And if we don't like that, oh my goodness, this is going to be a very boring Christianity for you. Ah. So we not enjoy rebuke, but you know, buckle your seatbelt of your positional righteous. If you are in Christ, there's no condemnation. Amen. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. You buckle that up and like, okay, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me why I am sorry. You know. <laughs> you know. In go and rebuke me and see how imperfect I am. And maybe with your help, maybe with all of our help together. Right? The vantage point of our position of righteousness. And perhaps we'll surely experience this practical righteousness will catch us up in knowing what we lack, in knowing how we pray. And we can praise God and glory for God how we will surely experience life transformation for the glory of God. It is a, it, you know, it is Christ in us, it is the hope of glory. Our relationship is righteous in our connection with God. We can work out this salvation. That is the vantage point. Positionally, we are secure, and practically, we need to grow. Even in the ways that we rebuke others, just because you are positionally secure, you don't just say whatever you want. You can say whatever you want, but you better make sure they have their seatbelt on of positional righteousness in order for you to say that. Do you know this is what they hear? Your kids will hear that. When you tell your kids, how come you got this B? Right? And they don't hear, how come I got a B in this class? Right? They hear like, oh, my dad hates me. Or they may hear that. They, I don't know. You know, you ask your kids. Yeah. yeah, and I experience that with my kids all the time. And I have to reaffirm, reaffirm, and put on their, their seatbelt. Even reach over and put on their seatbelt. Hey, you're my son. You're my number one son. You're my number one daughter. I only have a son and a daughter, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. And then you make sure their position of righteousness is secure. And you let them have it you know, as gently as possible. Yeah. Remember, you know, you know my, my line, right? You fly like a bee and sting like a butterfly. You know? You still have to sting, but you have to sting like a butterfly in the ways that you bring correction in their lives. Right? You know, and you know how, uh, how God is righteous and how our transformation can bring glory to Jesus. Yeah, and that's so important for us. And, and even looking at this prayer one more time, right? And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, that prayer, understanding that we need that much help and how we can pray that for one another how we invite others to pray for us, that we may be pure and be blameless and be filled with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. How we can all pray that with one another. Yeah. Can we take some time to pray for people, maybe your family relatives or whoever they are. Maybe they're here. You know, maybe take some time to pray. 우리가 서로 사랑하고 순결하고 흠이 없는 예수님의 의의 열매를 맺는 그죠? 그런 기도가 우리에게도 필요하고 남들에게도 필요한 것처럼 우리가 이 시간 잠깐 남들을 위해서 아니 우리들을 위해서 서로 그런 기도하는 시간을 갖고자 합니다. So let's all pray together and after that will the ushers come forward and we we'll take offering and we will um, uh, end our service together. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody just pray silently for like a minute um, asking God to to make us pure, make us blameless uh, as we abide in Christ. And those of you who have not made Jesus Christ your master, 
We want to give you time to respond to God, understanding that God has made a way for you to be with Christ, to be his son and daughter through, right? Through giving your life to Christ, to receiving Christ, receiving God's forgiveness and repenting that, oh, your old way of thought is, oh, I got to live right. I got to clean myself up, clean myself up before I can come to church or come to Christ. But what Jesus is telling us, no, you cannot make yourself clean. I have to do that for you. I have to cleanse you. Yeah, and those of you who want to give your life to Christ, you may do so at this time as well. So let's all pray together. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for what you have done on the cross. Through the shedding of Jesus' blood, how you made a way, how you became the way for us to be with you. Father, we repent from all, all of our worldly thoughts, even in the ways that we can be accepted we think is through good works. They, we have done more good works than bad works that you will accept us. But if we done more bad works than good works, you will not accept us. That's how we, we used to think. And we usually think. But through the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the Calvary, on the cross, you have forgiven us all of our sins. And we, as we believe in that, as we believe in that truth, you forgive us. You give us your spirit. You make us your son and daughter. And through the, our mystic union with Christ, you change us. You change us from inside out. You give us the new desire to be like you. You give us the power for us to live according to that new desire. You have written that on our hearts, on our minds. We thank you so much for your miracle work. Father, if there is any of us here this morning that have not come to that realization, would you convict our hearts about their eternality? Even the way that Jesus is going to come back. Is Jesus going to come back as a policeman who will punish us or who will receive us and take us to be with him forever and ever. Father, help us to be on the right side in repentance and believing who you are and what you have expressed to us. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful message, this word that you have given us, that it is a fruit, uh, that we may rest in our relationship with you, that we pursue hard in our connection with you, abiding in you, in communion, communion with you, that you will do your work in bringing righteous fruit for your glory. Father, we thank you so much for doing that. And how much that you have done that thus far. And we praise you. We glorify you, Father. But we got a long way to go. May we enjoy in all the days of our rest of our life. Until you come back or until we die. That we may enjoy. We may uh, be excited in all the things that you will do in our lives. To bringing out the image of Jesus Christ in our lives, Father. We thank you. We give you our life. You are our master. You are our king. You do what you wish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would the ushers come forward?